Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna rank some Lithuanian songs from Eurovision. There are um, not like too many of them, but there are quite a few. And I think Lithuania have been a lot of hit or miss uh, throughout the years. They have had a bunch of dark periods, followed up by um, a certain entry that still to this day, I believe, has their best result. And then a few more bad times, but during the years of late, I think they've really taken a step forward. So we're going to see how many songs we're going to place towards the top in this tier list today. Um, I think Lithuania is kind of a... It kind of used to be quite an anonymous country in terms of Eurovision for me personally. Uh, but during years of late, you, I actually usually kind of get a bit interested in what they're, uh, what they're up to over there. Uh, and uh, I've been... I've enjoyed their songs in years of late. Um, so, we're gonna get right into it. And Lithuania, of course, they debuted in uh, 1994. They finished last, I think, with zero points, perhaps. And then they left for a while and came back later. Uh, 1994, it's no real wonder that they came in last place with the zero points, I believe, because... I'm not sure if they actually got zero points or if I'm mistaken on that, but they finished last, and this song doesn't really have anything to it, unfortunately. Um, the vocal performance is a bit... Uh, it's not its not bad at all, but it's a bit lackluster. And when you have a song that is on its own also quite lackluster, I guess. Um, and doesn't really... there's really nothing here that I can latch on to, uh, musically or performance-wise or anything, really. Uh, it just kind of exists and... Yeah. I think I think the only thing that you really remember from it is the the raspiness in his voice, and that's not really a lot to really uh, latch on to. So this is just not for me. I don't think it is for a lot of people, unfortunately. It's quite a, an anonymous entry, in all honesty. Um, maybe zero points is a bit harsh because uh, there are songs which are way way worse, which have not scored zero points. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, so as I said, they went, they left for a while, uh, and then they came back in 99. And I know that this one has a bit of a following, I guess. Uh, there are people who like it. Uh, I'm just not one of them. This is not for me at all. I think it's uh, overly shouty. It has like these, there's like a clash of the high-pitched instruments going with this um, characteristic vocal style that they're going for. It just kind of clashes to me. I don't really enjoy the listening experience of it. Uh, even though it really has its own identity and it really uh, comes from a place of authenticism. Um, but it's just for my personal listening experience, it's simply not for me. I think it's uh, too shouty, too loud, uh, and a bit clashy in, in terms of frequencies and such. Uh, doesn't help that there's nothing really going on on stage either. I think it's just an off-putting entry for me personally. I admire what they're doing, but... Um, yeah, simply not for me. Um, and they kind of continued being like, oh, the early years of Lithuania. I just see the entries here. 2001, I believe this is, is You Got Style, which didn't do too badly for them, in all honesty. But, oh my word, I I do not like this song either. It's, it's funky, it's done with, you know, it's kind of harmless, I guess. It's tongue-in-cheek, but... I get so annoyed at the hook. It's very monotonous, incredibly repetitive, feels way too gimmicky for me personally, uh, with the um, <laughs> the backing singers with the sunglasses and the afro hairs. Um, and as I said, the hook is just so monotonous and repetitive that I, I can't, I simply can't with this song. Um, possibly my least favorite out of these down here. Um, it's not a what happened here. I don't think it's, like they have a purpose here, it's just that I don't like it, uh, so I'm going to put it down here. Uh, in 2002, we're just going to continue. This this is another... I don't know what the song is called. Um, I remember that it is like it has an attempt to be a bit cheerful, um, but the vocal performance is quite poor. Uh, songs, the hook of the song is, as I said, a bit cheerful, but at the same time doesn't offer anything that I really latch onto. The instrumental is uh, very bare-bones, very typical drum machines, early 2000s, sound kind of amateurish. Just nothing for me here either. Um, 
and I'm feeling like I'm overly bitter right now, but really, this is... Uh, these songs are <laughs> simply not for me. I warned you that I wasn't really the massive fan of Lithuania early, the earlier entries from Lithuania. 2004, though, uh, they did not qualify with this, but um, I think I will be a bit kinder here, because I think that this song has a hook, it has a kind of exotic little backing track to it. It's it's catchy, I think. It has a charm to it. Um, it's not overly, like, it's not a great in, in any area, really. I think that it's... Uh, it doesn't really have a lot of power, a lot of drive to it, but I think there is something in it that I just enjoy, so I'll put it in the I like it but category, because there is a little bit of a hook. There's some playfulness going on with the with how the arrangement is performed as well. Uh, it's admirable how they've made a little choreography and a performance out of it. I quite like it, but it's just so, too weak of a musical piece for me to put it into a solid category, I think. Um, but maybe it is a bit close to that category. Maybe I'm just grumpy today, I don't know. But um, it's, in my opinion, it's superior to the songs below it here. And it's also superior to the 2005 effort. Um, Little by Little, I think this one is called. It's just incredibly anonymous again. Um, it has a little bit of a catchy hook going for it, uh, but maybe I don't think that really expands to further than two lines. Uh, the backing track is quite um, weak. Uh, doesn't offer a lot of drive, doesn't offer a lot of energy. Um, as soon as the song is over, I've forgotten about it, and I think the absurd clothing choice just kind of makes it off-putting in a way. Um, that you don't really have a fond memory of the song, even though you've forgotten the song. You just kind of have the this image to go by, and uh, I think less of the song because of it, I guess. I don't know. Maybe a bit unfair, but I don't think there's much to this song here either, and it's not for me this one either. But now Lithuania has their uh, moment of glory, I guess, because when you do... I mean, we we can see here that they haven't had a very good track record for Eurovision, so maybe they just wanted to do some satire or whatever. Um, we Are the Winners by LT United is the greatest piece of S-housery in Eurovision that I can possibly ever think of. It's Alf Poyer can... he doesn't have anything to hold up against these... how many are they? Six guys? Who are just... they... It's incredibly difficult to really put into words what I think about this song, because the song is not very um, musically interesting, let's say, but it's incredibly memorable. Um, there's also, like, some dynamic switches within it that's quite... I mean, it's it's entertaining, and just this constant beat of a bit of energy is quite uh, quite enjoyable, I think, and the hook is obviously one that just sticks to your head, and it's one of those that... A lot of people will just despise it and hate it. And then there's me, who just really thinks it's incredibly funny. Um, and I get... Uh, I just kind of love this way of just satire. Um, as I said, it's it's as housery in, in the finest possible fashion. The performance is absolutely glorious. Um, it's just so absurd, everything about it, uh, that I just think it's... Yeah, you know, you can you can slate me all you want in the comments, but this is just fantastic at its at its finest. I love it. Um, this is a performance that I could put on at any time. I, it's not a song that I would listen to, but I just think the whole concept and the whole idea of it uh, and the fact that it actually worked, <laughs> that makes it even better. Um, yeah, I actually love it. Um, Eurovision wouldn't be the same without We Are The Winners. I, I really don't. I really can't see that reality. I just love the fact that it exists. Um, but as I said, maybe musically it should be down here, but whatever. Uh, 2007. Here is... Um, I'm actually really glad that the rule existed back then, that you, if you had a top 10 finish the year before, uh, you got a spot in the final the year after. In most cases, I'm not a fan of that, but at least Love or Leave here was allowed to be in the final which I really, really enjoy, because this is, a, this is a song that I really love, actually. I think it's fantastic. Uh, the backing track is so just my 
type of music. It's very restrained, relaxed, and it really just relies on guitars being able to play on top of each other. There's this soloing guitar going above the chord strumming guitar. Uh, there's this congas uh, constantly backing up the rhythm. There's some nice bass work. It's just an instrumental piece that it's really easy to just enjoy what's going on in it. And to kind of back that up as well, I think that the chorus of this song has a very lovely melody. The verses are quite, you know, they're packed with a with a sadness to them. And like the whole song is kind of covered in, in sorrow. But I think the verses especially have these chord switches along with how the melody lies on top of it that really, really creates a great tone of melancholy. Um, and I think they kind of just enhance this whole package by staging it the way they have with the silhouettes in the background. It's a beautiful color grading as well with the yellow and uh, gray uh, as well with the blacks and browns. It's just, it looks beautiful, I think, on stage uh, and it sounds beautiful to my ears. I know that this isn't really a song that's talked about a lot and it didn't do very well, but I am incredibly happy that it exists because I really do take a lot of enjoyment out of it. Um, just fits my type of music very well, I think. Um, but something that doesn't do that... Oh, jeez. Uh, I just realized, did they sit out in 2008? No, wait, 2008? No. <laughs> I'm just confused. 2008, Nomads in the Night or Nomads in the Light? Something. What happened here? I have no idea. This song is an absolute train wreck. I'm sorry that that is very harsh to say, but the vocal performance is so so horrendous that it's it's really a chore to sit through the song doesn't really have anything to latch onto. in all honesty the the melody is quite stale uh the backing track is very uninspiring but it everything is falls flat completely with this over dramatic approach and then the vocal performance which doesn't hold up uh to the rest of the song at all it's just a massive what happened here i i have no idea what um what really did happen here um, no, horrendous. I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry, but yeah, that's really what I feel. 2009, however, they turned it around. Love uh, by Sasha Son, I think he was called. Um, this is really enjoyable, in my opinion. Really great. Um, I get a lot of enjoyment out of this. I think the hook is very memorable, uh, but I think what really makes it stand out is the, is the setting and the atmosphere of the backing track. It's very atmospheric, uh, quite a tangible tone to it. Um... Liking the verses and how it really flows into the chorus. I think the chorus is the main selling point. It's a very memorable hook. Uh, while also being quite a restrained backing track to it. It doesn't really offer a lot of energy in this song. But I think that just the setting of the song is what really sells it. And works for this chorus. Uh, as well as when they throw in the electric guitar towards the end. It's very nice. And it's a nice touch that they switch uh, language towards the end as well. Just really enjoyable, and I like the staging as well. I like how mysterious he looks with the hat tilted on the side, and then he has he does something at the end where it's starting to burn from his hand. I don't know. It's just it's just really sets its own tone. It has it has its own identity, which I really like. And I also think there's a good song in here, so really great. Uh, Eastern European funk. They kind of felt like oh, we did so well with We Are the Winners. Let's just do it again. Um, but it just didn't really work the same way. I don't think the song has the same real immediate chanting hook that really works, uh, even though there's an attempt to have something a bit like it. Um, but at the same time, it also doesn't really want to go all the way with just being completely careless. It's like they want this to be more funny than it is because they actually take it... I don't. I won't say they take it seriously because that's not what they're doing. Um... But it's not that whole point of just making a song to be complete satire. This is more, look at us, how quirky we are. Uh, and it doesn't work the same way for me personally. I think for a lot of people, they would prefer this one. Just not for me. Um, yeah, I think it's a not for me overall, to be honest. I don't get a lot of enjoyment out of this one. I think it's more a chore to sit through than, uh, than it is to get some chuckles here and there. Sorry. Uh, 2011, C'est Ma Vie. This is a very slow-moving song, but, um, songwriting-wise, there's something in here. Uh, the instrumentation behind it is quite nice. It's a very classical-inspired type of backing track, and the vocal performance is strong. The staging is also quite nice. 
I just don't get any interest in it at all. I I complete I completely switch off when I listen to it. Um, which maybe I shouldn't do because maybe I should appreciate it more than I am. But uh, I think it's an I like it but here, in all honesty. Uh, I don't get quite enough enjoyment out of this one to really put it in solid. Uh, solid in terms of songwriting, absolutely, but it's too slow and too uninteresting for me. Uh, we'll put it down here. 2012, however, Love is Blind. Um, oh, this is great. It's really great. Um, yeah, love the opening. Very dramatic, very in-your-face right from the get-go. And then comes in this, you know, the, the funky disco beat right in with the really energetic drum machines. There's this string arrangement that really works. The hook is memorable. Uh, the performance is fantastic, I think. Um, I think he's a great performer. Gives this song a lot of character. Gives this song a lot of just great uh, identity to it. I love it. Um, I think it's really, really great. Uh, it's verging on the side of fantastic, I think. Uh, I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. I always love watching this performance, especially. Uh, and the song does have so many like upbeat and, and memorable parts in it. Uh, but it's not quite there for me. Uh, 2013, we have something. Uh, this is... <laughs> yeah. I, I think this one has kind of got the... Um, what do you say? the identity of being a filler song for the 2013 final, and I kind of get that. Uh, it doesn't really have a lot of anything. It's it's very backing track-like, and um, yeah, the the chorus has something, I guess, but it, it's not really enough. There's this constant strumming guitar, which is... It offers some energy, but the song doesn't really go anywhere extra. Uh, it just kind of ponders on, and I don't think there's too much to latch onto it. But it's well performed. Uh, it's very harmless. I think it's an I like it, but because it doesn't really have anything that stands out about it. Um, so yeah, we'll put it down there. Then we have Attention. Uh, I know this song has a few fans, I think, but most people would probably um, maybe not have a problem with me placing this in the what happened here, because this is incredibly loud and incredibly all over the place and uh, I I just can't with it. It's it's one of the most obnoxious songs for me personally. Uh, I think it's just shouting, very non-melodic songwriting. Um, more noise than anything for me personally. I'm sorry if you like this song but I, I, I can't get behind it and I don't understand it. So uh, that that's the way it is. Uh, 2015 I don't know what the song is called, but it's a it's a duet. It's very cute, almost to the to the point where it's too cute. Um, but it's that you know that whole feeling of uh, newly in love, we're running on the beach, holding hands, and uh, it's that lovey dovey kind of thing. Uh, but it is, I mean, it is cute, and it is uh, a, a nice performance. Uh, the song has a lot of energy into it. I like the backing track of it. I think the chorus is quite memorable as well, even though it's a bit repetitive with the constant lover, 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 lover. Um, but um, solid. I think so. Solid. Uh, fun performance, upbeat song. I can't really complain about it, especially in the final of 2015. They needed a song like this in there. Um, yeah. 2016, I've been waiting for this night. This is another really great one, I think. I do prefer Love is Blind by quite a margin, but I think this one is performed fantastically well. Um, I love the stage layout of it, I love the choreography, love the lighting mainly. Uh, the song is quite a solid pop song with a lot of uh, upbeat character, very modern production that sounds good. Um, maybe it doesn't really have the same type of hook that I think Love is Blind has, but uh, it's a great performance and it's a well-written song. Really great. 2017, uh, what happened here? Reign of Revolution. I think this one is the same as with Attention, that a few people might really like it, but uh, I'm just not one of them. Uh, this is also loud, it is repetitive, it is shouty. It has all of the same issues as I think Attention had. Uh, all of the same things that I disliked about Attention, I think it's the same about Reign of Revolution. I'm sorry. Uh, it's not very melodically engaging at all. The backing track is... Um, quite monotonous and not very interesting. 
it's just hard hitting synths and hard hitting drums and them shouting on top of it. I, it's not for me. Just what happened there? I don't know. I could be lenient and put it in the not for me, but I, I really think what happened here about this one. Um, yeah, 2018, When We're Old. This is pretty um, well written song. It's quite like it's very minimalistic and it's a bit slow for my personal like like i liked it more the first times i heard it than i do now whenever i sit back and listen to the song now i get a bit dragged out of it i zone out a little bit uh, because it doesn't really go to any elevation throughout and it's very up and down quite um restrained all the way throughout uh, i get that that really works in its favor in setting the tone and i think it's one of those that you will like more uh the first times you hear it because then it has that immediate impact. But the more times you hear it, the more you feel like the three minutes are kind of just drawing out. Uh, but what I think really works for it is the fact that it's staged so incredibly well. Uh, how, she use, how she utilizes the bridges by walking on top of them and the lighting behind her with the yellows and blacks. It looks great. It sounds great. It is really great. 20, let's see, 2019, Run With The Lions. Um, this, obviously, I mean, it should have been in the final in 2019. I think everyone is aware of that now, that the, there was a mis, uh, miscalculation in the jury votes, I believe, and he missed out because of it. Sad for, for him and sad for Lithuania, of course. Uh, the song is... I think there's a good song in here. I, I get enjoyment out of it. I think the hook is memorable. I think the backing track sounds pretty solid. I think the voice... Like his vocal performance is definitely the main selling point. I, I love the way he switches between uh, normal register and his falsetto. Just really works. Uh, staging is quite, um, unfortunately, very empty and doesn't give him a lot of like backing stuff to rely on. And uh, maybe the backing track isn't the most exciting. Uh, but I think the vocal performance is really what makes it work. And I'm tempted to put it in really great. I will. I will put it up there. Yep. Really great. Yep. But it's, I think it's, uh, it's, to, <laughs> it's towards the lower side of this category. I don't think the, the, it has enough of uh, things to latch on to performance wise, uh, but the vocal performance is what really just pushes it over the line up here. Um, 2020, uh, we have On Fire. This song is actually really, really great. Um, I love the guitar, like the guitar arrangement that sets the opening for the song. Uh, it really flows very well. Um, yeah, the verses are great. And then the hook is, you know, it's tacky, but it's also very catchy and very charming. Fantastic. Oh, whoopsie. <laughs> uh, fantastic. I love it. Uh, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit like overly tacky to do these choreo things. But I mean, it's a selling point and it works for them. So I get what they're doing it. But the song that they have on their own is is really just a fantastic piece of music, I think. Um, yeah, and the and melodic writing as well, and the sound design is really, really strong. Yeah, it's a fantastic song, and I think I prefer it over Discotheque, which we're talking about now, but Discotheque is also fantastic. I love the guitar arrangement in the opening of this song. It's this palm-muted uh, sound while also having like the... The little bit of like the, the, what do you call it? Like a contrastive tone in the sliding up the, the fretboard uh, with, the, with the higher notes. It just works. It has a great sound to it. Um, and it works with like setting this suspenseful, mysterious tone in the opening. Uh, and the, the, um, like the vocal chorus, the vocal part of the chorus uh, still kind of has that mysterious tone within it. It's very whispery and really works well with these... Um, the sound design in the background and then you have these the b section of the chorus which is very driving very dominant the synth really just pick up and take over the sound stage it's a great dynamic i think uh, and they also make a great performance with it it just works uh, i love watching it i love listening to the song as well it's just tons of fun for three minutes and um maybe they deserve to have uh, got lithuania's best result instead of the <laughs> the satire act but um it wasn't meant to be, but I think that um, the Roop definitely uh, have made have left their imprint on uh, on Eurovision because two fantastic songs in my opinion with great great performances. 
And finally, we have Sentimentai. I think this song has a lot of great qualities to it. I love the world building of it. It really is one of these that just takes you into the song where it's uh, intended to be performed at. Um, I'm not really sure if I'm completely sold with the stage performance at Eurovision. It's just not the type of setting that I want to see this song being performed at. Because the song is very um, dark, it's very moody, uh, very reliant on a suspenseful and restrained instrumentation behind it. Um, and the vocal style also really works very well with that. And I particularly like some of the chord movements and the bass walks throughout this song. I think the bass is very prominent and um, quite the standout in this song, along with the vocal performance and how the vocal really just kind of uh, tells the story. It's a very um, intimate vocal style as well, uh, which is backed up very well with the backing track. Uh, it's just that the performance doesn't really connect, like, it doesn't fit the ambiance that I'm getting from the, like, the vibe that I'm getting from the song. Uh, I would have wished for more darkness, uh, but I mean, they got a good result with it, so they probably did something right. But, you know, for my personal taste, it doesn't quite reach the fantastic category because of it. I think uh, a lighting in the uh, in the vein of either a love or leave or maybe a when we're old would have been would have pushed it over the line. But we're we're really great. I'm very happy that Lithuania have got so many good results lately. Um, it's quite encouraging, I think, to see that you can start off like this and you can end up up here. That's that's the way I will summarize Lithuania, I think. Um, very excited, in all honesty, to see what they have in 2023 because they're on a roll, I think. Um, and maybe you agree with me or maybe you completely disagree. Maybe you think that uh, discotheque and On Fire and Sentimentai are the absolute worst and that Nomads of the Night or Nomads in the Night or whatever is among the greatest. I don't know. Maybe there's someone out there who thinks that. But I am not that person. Let's just say that. Um, do tell me what you think of the Lithuanian entries in Eurovision. You can uh, share your own tier list with me in the comments if you want to. Uh, and I'll be looking forward to hopefully seeing you in another video soon. So take care of yourselves until then and uh, 